Uh, I'm representing the Isaka Vantic Chapter Board uh, in the role of, of president. And it's really for us a uh, great honor to have all of you connected again for one of our uh, sessions uh, for all of the Isaka Vantic Chapter members. And today we've also got a couple of guests that have uh, joined in. But more importantly, it's for us also uh, a great honor to welcome Mr. Yusuf Kilio, who is our speaker for today. And uh, on the topic that uh, will be the topic for today, mapping the threat landscape and impact of the global pandemic on enterprise ICT security. Now, uh, Yusuf is a um, seasoned expert in the fields of cybersecurity and digital forensics, uh, and also a current uh, board member of AFICTA, which is the African Association for ICT, uh, where he represents um, the um, African continent. Uh, Yusuf uh, started off, uh, he's originally from Dar es Salaam, and he started off studying at the Dar es Salaam Institute of Technology, where he was admitted for uh, in, at the computer engineering department uh, and majored in computer uh, technician studies. He then joined the Staffordshire University, where he was admitted for the computer science department, uh, and he completed his uh, BSc in computers, majoring in computer security. And from there, Yusuf went on to work for various organizations, including the Tanzania Police Force, where he used his uh, skills in the fields of digital forensics investigations. And uh, currently he is a speaker and trainer in the fields of cybercrime, uh, cyber espionage, um, all across the African continent. So we are really thankful for Yusuf to make time uh, available on his very, very busy schedule to speak to us today on the topic of mapping the threat landscape and impact of global pandemic on enterprises, ICT security. Uh, so with those few introductory remarks and welcoming, I would like to not waste any further time, uh, but to hand over to Yusuf to take us through this very interesting um, topic. We do have a handout <coughs> in the form of a PDF document that we will be distributing to all attendees to today's session. Uh, which Yusuf has prepared for us uh, with his uh, presentation. So thank you very much, Yusuf, for the uh, due diligence uh, preparation for the session and the information that you are sharing with us today. So once again, Yusuf, thank you very much uh, for joining us today and over to you to take us through the presentation. Thank you very much, my brother John from Namibia. Um, I remember we met around uh, 2016 when I was there and it was very good we were together and uh, I find you to be very very good friend and I feel fortunate to to to, to have known you um, thank you very much for this opportunity to address uh, Isaka Namibian uh, window chapter and uh, as, we are, as it has been mentioned I'm going to talk about mapping threat landscape and the impact of global pandemic on enterprise ICT security. Uh, I think a lot have been talked about myself um, that I've been working in the field of cyber security and digital forensics, and um, um, I, 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 I did uh, a number of, uh, of activities when it comes to cyber security and digital forensics. I managed to work with different companies, including KTCL, Deloitte & Touch, Tanzania Police Force, etc. I'm consulting a number of companies as, as, as of the moment and so on. So basically, um, uh, today's session, I'm going to share uh, different experience on the different issues and probably I'll bore you with some of the scenarios that I'm going to share with you all. So uh, let me quickly go into to, to start with the, with the first uh, uh, scenario which is uh, Manchester United uh, has been attacked, announced being attacked, and the system went shut down. This was recently, uh, it, was, it was popular all over the, the, the media, and it happened during this uh, uh, period of, uh, of 
of, uh, of, of, of COVID-19 or, or global pandemic. And uh, that was not the only incident we have seen. I just picked several incidents that I'm going to share with you, but there are hundreds of incidents. In fact, uh, due to many students being uh, without job, without anything, we happen to see a lot of incidents happening. People um, get a lot of time to attack different organizations, different institutions, and so on and so on. Also, I want to also share with you some few facts why these uh, institutions uh, 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 and so on that are happening today. Uh, to start with, uh, I, have, I have to say the first reason that many things are happening, we have seen massive shutdown of offices and other facilities. Uh, it is, it's, 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 a, it's a common fact that we have seen numbers of organizations shutting down their, uh, their, their, their uh, organization. Some of them, they decided to send people home uh, temporarily. Some of them, they even shut down completely. So we have a lot of people on the, uh, 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 who are jobless. And also we have uh, schools and other, other, other uh, education in, uh, institutions where we have a number of people without, uh, with a lot of skills, but they're at home idle doing nothing. So to that extent, you find those people are trying to, uh, to commit crime, like hacking, uh, causing troubles to systems, because they don't have anything to do in their students with, uh, with, 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 the, with, uh, with the very good skills when it comes to computer and so on and so on. Also, we have seen uh, uh, organizations, they still want to operate, some of them, uh, that they, uh, they want to shut down their offices, but they still want to operate. So what do they do? They introduce what we call bring your own device, work from home, uh, work from anywhere, and so on and so on. So this is something else. Also, because of that, we have seen companies now are trying their level best to invest on technology. We have seen technology have been invested. People now are using, like, for example, what we are doing now, we are using um, a, a Meet, uh, uh, what we call it, uh, uh, the, the, the Microsoft team. Uh, we're using it to communicate. We have other people using Zoom and so on and so on. So technology, people are investing on technology so that they can communicate remotely. They can talk while they're not, uh, they're not in, a, in one place and so on and so on. Also, that make uh, uh, a demand on, 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 on uh, how do we call it, the place on the digital infrastructure become a serious uh, 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 demanded because Many people now they want to uh, to have the this uh, 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 things going smoothly. So what do they do? They start con getting connected. They want to know uh, the technology that they can simplify their job. They can allow people to work from home, allow people to work anywhere, and be able to be productive. And also we have seen now the IT function to be under tremendous pressure because um, uh, you need to people are now relying on connectivity, relying on, for example, now I'm here, I'm talking to people living in Namibia and everywhere else that are connected to, the, to this particular platform. So what is happening? Those people, uh, IT, IT people, they need to communicate, to connect these people. They do the best they can to see how they can connect these people, how they can provide those um, uh, connection, make sure that the support provide uh, uh, this, uh, the needed support and so on and so on. Apart from that, also we have seen organizations um, are facing what we call having a very huge uh, 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 perimeter to protect because now you don't only concentrate on the uh, uh, equipment in the office, rather you think about the equipment from everyone who is everywhere. Some they're using their own laptops, their own mobile phones to, to work, their own everything to work, Wi-Fi and everything. So, Parameter to protect become many, and you need to make sure that you protect these people uh, uh, accordingly. Also, we have seen tech has become more targeted by cyber criminal tech companies. We have seen like uh, Zoom was a victim of cyber crime. We have seen Google. We have seen uh, recently. We have seen Cisco was a victim of cyber crime, and many other tech companies happen to be victims of cyber criminals. So all these leads to many attacks, and we have seen also the story of 
uh, hospitals. Uh, I, I remember you hear the story where Russian was accused to, to attack those uh, research centers that were dealing with vaccine for COVID-19. So hospitals and uh, other, other, other um, uh, health centers happen to be a victims of this particular uh, uh, attacks on, during this COVID-19. As a result, there was headline November 13 saying that cyber attacks are getting healthcare must stop because there were too many and they were causing a lot of troubles across different countries in the world. And actually, uh, this is uh, something that uh, actually uh, uh, happened before, whereby we have we reached a point where people now, they decided even to kill other individual using this uh, 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 cyber crime. So they managed to, to uh, attack individuals uh, using what we call human malware. They manage also to attack uh, those facilities that provide service to individuals. As a result, they cause uh, what we call ransomware, uh, ransomware attack. As a result, they cause those facilities not to work and, in, uh, and eventually cause the numbers of deaths that we have experienced for the past few years. So from that particular point of view, I would like to speak about several impacts of this particular pandemic. Number one, uh, securing remote capability and the protected access of, to enterprise systems has become one of the serious problems because now it is difficult that how can I tell that someone that probably used to use our system in the office now works in another, in another place that can use something that we really want him to use. So basically, uh, you find people, they have, uh, they're using their own password, I mean, uh, Wi-Fi with the weak password and so on. As a result, those things to protect all these different, different equipment become one of the very difficult uh, things for people to do. But that's not enough. Also, reinforcing organization security policy and control on remote workforce become a very difficult task because now you, 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 you can have, these people can have policy, that you need to use strong password, you need to uh, make sure that you don't, you don't connect yourself on public Wi-Fi, you don't have to do this, you don't have to do that. But unfortunately, now reinforcing this thing to make sure that people are doing it, it becomes one of the very serious problems. Many people are not following it up. Many people are not really getting into uh, 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 following this policy and it's difficult to follow these things. And as you can see, many organizations are now struggling to see the better way to review their policies so that they can at least be able to reinforce them and so on and so on and so on, trying to, re to review the control uh, uh, measure that we have put in place because now people are working from everywhere. I've seen some, com uh, some, some, I've been to some countries, I see people working on the, even uh, 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 cafes, uh, well, uh, train station and so on and so on, you find people still working because it's a work from everywhere. So basically, it's become one of the very serious problems. But apart from that, the story of BCP, Business Continuity Plan, and Instant Response uh, uh, Plan, uh, uh, because we are not, uh, we are not uh, prepared for this kind of pandemic, has become one of the very serious problems because no one ever thought that it will reach a time where people may start working from home, working from everywhere. They can just using this uh, uh, digital platform to communicate, to do these things, and so on and so on. So as a result, uh, we, 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 we saw uh, uh, this PCP that we had before, uh, uh, an IRP that we had before, and not really resolving the current problem that we are facing, because it's, a current, uh, it's, it's, it's actually the new scenario that we're facing currently. So that is another thing. And also we have seen a big number of people falling victims to uh, phishing attacks, uh, phishing attacks, especially the phishing attacks that was uh, was uh, uh, was namely or, or targeting this COVID uh, 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 COVID nineteen. We have seen it. Uh, many people falling victim to it. For example, they are saying that we are, it's 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 a it's a link or something to track a certain uh, individual things to track or to follow this and that. So we have seen those kind of problem and serious challenges that we. Uh, uh, people are trying to face. And basically that brings a lot of troubles to many organizations because um, 
when when this individual get to get to fall victim to phishing attack, then they put their company in jeopardy because uh, many organizations after phishing attack received what we call ransom attack and other attacks that followed after phishing attack. Apart from that, we have seen potential delay in cyber attack uh, detection and response simply because it is difficult now to tell who has already fallen victim and how we can respond to those particular attacks because everyone is working everywhere. So difficult to contain and to control those kind of attacks that are happening to everyone. And in fact, the rising impacts of cyber crime criminals happen to be uh, one of the serious impact of this particular pandemic. As I've said earlier when I started this conversation, that many people are now jobless in cyber threats. Uh, they have uh, a knowledge of different uh, organization and unfortunately now they are not working. So they have ample time to cause problem. That's number one. Number two, we have a lot of students who are at home that don't go to, to, to schools or they don't go to, uh, to, 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 I mean, they don't go to school. They're not busy like the way they used to. So they get a lot of time to play with computer, to learn about hacking, causing troubles. And now we have things like RAS, ransom as a service. So they just collect those kind of uh, 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 code, malicious code to, to launch ransom attack and they send to different people and they get to cause a lot of trouble to different individuals. So this happened to be one of the very serious impacts during this pandemic. As a result, we have seen a major five attacks to, uh, uh, that was brought about during this pandemic, number one, Happen to be social engineering, which phishing attack is under it. We have seen people are doing a lot of shoulder surfing uh, from the hotel, or you're working from anywhere. Someone can easily shoulder surf and see what you're typing and copy those ideas. Or if you're working at home, you're working on the certain document at home. Someone may see those documents if they come to visit you. They're sensitive document, but you're working with them at home, so they come, they see it, and so on and so on. So social engineering and as i've said phishing attack as a result that uh, uh we also saw what we call insider threats insider threats meaning people that used to work with you now are no longer working with you they become a threat to your organization they have a lot of information they have a lot of data and 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 and, and they can always cause troubles to your organization some they need to make money and they don't have money so what they do they have to start causing troubles to systems and so on and so on, and they end up becoming insider threats. Ransom attack also is on the rise. As I've said, no, whatever we see phishing attacks on the rise, ransom attack also uh, gets on the rise because ransom attack and phishing attack are normally following one another. So basically, ransom attack, I've seen different organizations falling victim to ransom attack. It's actually bringing a lot of troubles to many organizations. Personally, I've been resolving a lot of challenges related to ransom attack for the past a few years. Also, money, the middle attack, where we are different places, we are using free Wi-Fi at the hospitals, uh, restaurants, um, uh, 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 cafes, uh, train station, and so on and so on. When we use this uh, public Wi-Fi, which are free Wi-Fi, we end up falling victim to money, the middle attack because someone can, can make use of those uh, weak uh, no password to start committing crimes to individuals. They get into your communication and they do strange things that probably you are not supposed to, uh, to, to, to uh, get into it. And of course, we have seen advanced persistent threats on cloud-based services, which happen to be one of the serious problems. That's why Zoom was attacked. Google, uh, things like uh, Cisco, all these that they provide these cloud-based services happen to be victim Microsoft recently as well. So we've been seeing a lot of attacks on these cloud-based services, advanced persistent attack uh, on these uh, cloud-based services uh, being one of the troubling things that many people are currently facing. So um, after that, I want also to discuss on the attacks, several attacks that uh, probably you can, uh, I would share with you. I will start with the, uh, uh, software AG ransom attack. As I've said, ransom attack happened to be one of the deadly problems during this pandemic, uh, among those five attacks that I've mentioned. So AG, uh, software AG uh, was one of the victims that October 2020, 
uh, happened to uh, poor victims with, uh, with the, this uh, ransom attack, but also a Spora Syria ransom attack, which also, uh, it's a French IT service giant Spora, uh, uh, was, was also a victim on 20th October. They admitted that it was uh, uh, having a serious challenge. But also we saw man in the middle attack on Telegram. Telegram was hijacked in uh, October as well. I mean, September 2020 this year. And um, this is one of the very serious problem on a Carnival Corporation data breach is one of the thing that we, uh, it was uh, uh, it was an, a ransom attack that happened in August 2020. And uh, not only that, but also we have seen a Cypress C shows malware attack whereby uh, it is from Chicago, whereby they were uh, having a, a serious malware attack on this particular uh, company. And all these attacks uh, can go on and on, happen to, uh, uh, to happen, as I've said earlier, because during this period, many people are having nothing, nothing to do. So what they normally do now is just to cause troubles to individuals, causing troubles to organizations, causing troubles to many things. That's why everyone... Uh, now is a potential victim to this particular attack. So from this, like an introduction that I've mentioned, I want now to talk, uh, I, won't, uh, I won't be doing you justice if I won't tell you of how now we can secure our remote workplace. Because criminals are there, things, as I've said, they're happening. Problems are many. Now we need to see how we can get ourselves out of these troubles. Let us start with the challenges that we have before us. Number one, as I've said many times from my presentation, we have a lot of endpoints to protect. People are working from home. Not only working from home, people are using their, uh, 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 their own device. They're using their own devices. They are creating their own devices and so on. So basically, this happened to be one of the serious problem or challenges that currently is before us. Also, we have limited capacity of IT staff to support these uh, people who are working everywhere. You know, if you are working in one place, it's, diff it's easy for IT staff to, su to support individuals. But at the moment, people are working everywhere and everyone needs support. So we don't need, we don't have enough capacity to provide support to every IT personnel in everywhere. Also, cyber hygiene on bringing your own device, as I've said, become serious problem. You're using your own device. Then what should you do? People are not really following it up. If you're using your own device, should you connect to every uh, free Wi-Fi you get to see everywhere? Should you just install every malicious software that you have or you see or you download on the, on the internet? Should you just allow people not to, uh, to be able to access your device absent those passwords and so on and so on. So basically this cyber hygiene when it comes to uh, bring your own device happen to be one of the deadly thing. But that's not enough. Lack of appropriate security policy is one of the big challenge that currently we have. Many organizations have been calling upon different organizations, telling them you have to think doing your security policy that we had did not really address the issue of people working from home, people that they can use devices, people that can use things that probably um, uh, when you're working from home, meaning you, you expose the uh, data of the company to a, a big number of people, friends who come to visit you and so on, they can see this document, sensitive document of our offices. So the policy were not there before. So these things is one of the serious challenge currently that we are facing. Also missing security patches on personal devices. Because if you're using your own device, it is difficult for you to, uh, to provide patches to make sure that it is updated with no, uh, 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 with no vulnerability because with patch system, because there are vulnerabilities. And because there are vulnerabilities, the, the manufacturer or the, uh, the, the developer of the particular system or application normally release patches. So these individuals sometimes they don't really take a responsibility to patch their devices because they don't see the need of it or they don't understand the importance of them to patch their system. So that is another big challenge that we currently have. 
And of course, the story of non-sanctioned business software, people downloading software from everywhere. We, they do not know what software they're using, what is it important, how is it important to their phone. They just install it, make use of it. And as a result, they cause a lot of troubles to different devices. I remember I spoke sometimes uh, during one of my presentation in Tanzania, um, I mentioned that um, we have the story of protecting our mobile data. So what is happening here, people, they normally download malicious software without knowing that they collect a lot of data from devices that we are using. As a result of those malicious software, they end up causing troubles by stealing, by making uh, this uh, 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 data in our devices being available to people who are not supposed to be uh, to see those devices. So basically, non-sanctioned application become one of the very serious problems that everyone uh, need to have a look at. Now, what should be done? Because those are the challenges that I spoke about. And uh, the challenges are not small, they are too big, as I've mentioned. And uh, I remember I spoke with one of my friends, he mentioned that uh, they are too huge to get solution to it currently or quickly. So number one, we should, we should do the best we can to monitor for shadow IT and move user towards approved solution. So if there is anything that is not supposed to be used, should be taken out and people should be able to use only thing that they are supposed to be used. If the devices is not allowed to be used for the company infrastructure, then it should be taken out and people should use things that they're not supposed to be using. And of course, we must be aggressive when uh, to comfort the risk because the risk is too high. We need to do as much as we can to make sure that these risks are either reduced significantly or we just take them off as much as we can. In addition, we need to target additional awareness and communication where emerging threats arise because we have a lot of emerging threats, especially during this COVID period. As I've said, the sort of insider threats, ransomware attack, phishing attacks, and many other attacks that are happening during this particular uh, pandemic period. We call upon individuals to make sure that they train their staff, they train their user, they train people that they use their critical infrastructure to make sure those things are properly used so that people cannot easily fall victims to different attacks. Apart from that, also we should ensure remote access systems are fully patched and secured, configured. Because if you allow people to remotely access your system, to remotely your system, those particular things, they should be well secured, they should be well patched, because if not doing so, then you may cause a lot of troubles to different uh, 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 system within your organization. In addition, you need to update uh, to remote access and bring your own devices policy uh, because those policies I've mentioned become one of the deadly things. We, we were not prepared. Now, the story of bringing your own devices, working from home, we need to come up with a good policy that they can help us minimize the, ch uh, the, the challenges that they may come along with these particular uh, things of remote working and bring your own or making use of our own devices or, uh, or creating our own devices so that we can perform a normal working uh, 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 things to country, uh, our country. In the event of fraudulent or termination, because you know, the problem of insider threats, one of the uh, uh, important thing, one of the important thing that we need to understand is that uh, those uh, 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 people that we normally take them outside the office or we ask them to go outside the office, they normally have a lot of details of our organization. They used to work with us. They have details about our organization. They cause... Um, they have details about our, our, our organization. They, they, they know what we, we, where our data are. They know our vulnerabilities of our organization. So these people, if you terminate them, you should be prepared to understand that those people can, uh, can have access to these things remotely and can cause damage to our system. 
So knowing that, we need to understand the story of mitigation. How do we terminate these people? Proper way to terminate individuals. Don't just uh, wake up one day and tell somebody that you are no longer working with us, allowing them to... Uh, uh, I remember I was reading one of the reports uh, recently that around 45% of these individuals, when they get terminated, they copy data from that particular company, they steal information about that, about that particular company and start causing troubles later on. The story of Microsoft, the story of insider threats from everywhere, those things troubles many organizations because of this uh, shortage when it comes to mitigate mitigation or the, 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 the risk of insider threats. So insider threats by itself, it's a, it's, a, it's a long, long discussion that uh, uh, we, can, we can have a look at it for a very long period of time. But, uh, but we should, of course, uh, 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 address it uh, when, 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 uh, in time if uh, uh, the time will allow. Also, we need to think of monitoring remote access systems, email active directories for normal login. We don't allow people who are not supposed to log into our system to be able to log into our system. Also, corporate IT security architecture should be uh, reassessed if there is any um, architecture that is being used by corporate at the moment during this COVID, maybe to support remote worker, to support the sort of bring, bring your own device, create your own device, and so on and so on. They should be reassessed so that they can be able we can be able to close the loophole of vulnerabilities within those particular critical uh, security uh, IT infrastructures. In addition, we need to mitigate the increase of risk when it comes to phishing with technical controls. We have things like phishing simulation awareness. We have things like um, making sure that you you, you terminate uh, or, or block the, 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 the emails with malicious content, for example. You can do the, the, the filtering of EXE files that they cannot get into your, system, uh, to your email address and so on and so on. The story of mitigation, the, 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 the increasing risk of phishing uh, uh, with technical controls is one of the very important things that should be done. Also, we need to ensure remote access system as sufficient reliance with the uh, with withstand DDoS attack, we have seen a uh, disputed denial, denial of service attack happen to be one of the deadly problem, causing troubles to many organizations. So, uh, and this is because many people are accessing your system from everywhere. So you cannot really know who is actually doing the right thing, who is actually authorized, and so on and so on. So because of that, we have seen this number of D uh, D uh, DDoS attacks that troubling our system. So we need to make sure that we ensure the things uh, or the systems are well are put in a place whereby people cannot really have troubles uh, uh, system because of a massive number of, 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 of other individuals unauthorized and authorized people to get into your system. Also, you need to ensure you have people, process and technology. I always emphasize on these three things, PPT, people, process and technology, capability to detect and respond to cyber attacks because now cyber attacks are many as i've said we have seen numbers of cyber attacks in the past uh, nine months and all these cyber attacks we need to have team to respond to these attacks to detect these particular attacks as i've said earlier sometimes it's difficult to detect because people are working from everywhere from home from offices from uh, bar from uh, on the road and so on and so on as they travel etc so basically you need to be aware and make sure that we have all these things in place to be able to detect all these things, all right? So these are the major things that I, want to, uh, I wanted to talk about. But just to wind up, I just want to give you the key takeaways that I call upon all organizations to do as we are approaching, um, I mean, as we are facing this particular uh, global pandemic where people now are working from home, where people are, are struggling to use their own devices, free Wi-Fi's, uh, different uh, uh, tools that we're not supposed to use, and so on and so on, et cetera, et cetera. So one thing that I want to call upon organization is to make sure that you conduct vulnerability assessment and penetration testing as often as you can to check that your organization is indeed not vulnerable to cyber attacks. Number two, I call upon organization to make sure that they do backup because the story of ransomware is real. And I've said many times that Many companies now are facing a ransomware attack. Seriously attack on ransomware 
happen to be one of the very serious problem. Many people are facing this particular challenge. So having backup in place is one of the very important things that everyone need to have um, a, a knowledge about it. But the sort of backup here is not only to do backup because you can do backup and you may not do anything. So the sort of how often do you, back, do, you do backup? Where do you do that backup? And can you use that backup to return to normal when anything bad happen? So these are very important things that also you need to consider. Also you need to keep all the system software and application update with the latest security patches. We have seen Microsoft, many, many um, um, uh, companies, many uh, uh, product, uh, 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 I mean, those who produce product, those who uh, uh, produce software systems and so on, they normally release patches when they realize uh, there is a, 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 a vulnerability or anything that may, may bring their systems or application into troubles. So when that is happening, you also need to do patches because when that thing is released, for example, every second Tuesday of every month, Microsoft has a routine of releasing party if there is any. So you need to make sure that you do the patches so that at least you may remain safe and protect your critical infrastructure. Also, you need to restrict employee from sharing password at work openly or encourage them to use the unique and strong password because the story of password here is very important. And you can also encourage people to make use of two-factor authentication, for example, or three-factor authentication if possible. So this is something also need to be well uh, 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 observed because the story of three-factor authentication um, uh, uh, or two-factor authentication, I mentioned many times that it helps a lot because uh, it gives ability to uh, to individuals if he, someone managed to get into their system not to be able to get into it because someone may have your password but they may need something else to get uh, to, to, to be authorized to make use of your system, application and so on. So we have three factor authentication. One is who you are, which is one is, uh, uh, of course, let me start with who you are, who you are. Here we are talking about, um, we are talking about uh, biometric. And then we have, here we are talking about um, uh, smart cards, uh, OTPs, uh, key, and so on and so on. And then we have what you know. Here we are talking about PIN, password, and so on. So these three-factor authentication can complement the story of password. Apart from using strong password, good password, also you need to think of um, making sure that those um, uh, those, uh, how do we call it, those uh, password cannot be uh, fully, uh, you cannot on them because if anything happened to them, someone may need the sec second or third factor authentication to gain access to your system, your uh, application and so on and so on. We have seen things like Facebook. Uh, many applications now they are using two-factor authentication just like ATM, some of the ATM, they even started using three-factor authentication. So you need to emphasize on this particular thing. Also, on the other hand, I call upon our organization to make sure that they block email spoofing, spam, and BEC attack by securing your email's domain with email authentication protocols like DMR, SPF, or DKIM, all these can support you when it comes to blockage of these emails and so on. So when I speak of um, SP, uh, SPF, I'm talking about sender policy framework. I, uh, when I speak of um, DKIM, I'm talking about domain key, identifier, mails. And when I speak about DMARAC, I'm talking about domain-based message I authentication reporting and confirmation. So you need to think about that as well, so that at least the right email goes to the right person and you receive the right email from the right person as well. Also, you need to run the cyber attack simulation campaign like phishing simulation. We have many, many uh, uh, simulations that you can run to your organization so that at least you can make sure that your organization is indeed in check when it comes to 
uh, 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 cyber attacks when, whenever, whenever, whenever attack, whenever you do the simulation, meaning you're putting your people ready when the actual attacks came on board, you will know how many people can fall victim so you can get yourself prepared in advance. So that is very, very important as well. As I've mentioned already, the sort of multi-factor authentication, making use of it, in addition to what we call password that we normally use, it's something that I call, I call upon many organizations to think about it. In addition, uh, but before going to in addition, I, 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 we have seen a number of organizations now are using, for example, SmartCat to access their building. They are also using fingerprint to access their building and many other, other, other factors to, to make sure that people can gain access to the, the systems, uh, uh, building systems and so on and so on. Also, you need to make use of what we call the a need to know or, and separation of, uh, uh, of duty. Because um, I remember I worked with Deloitte and Tooch and there was several uh, um, uh, 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 units during that particular uh, 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 company. For example, we had TAS, which is Technology Advisory Services, MC, Management Consulting, and so on. So it, if you do the separation of duty and need to know, meaning people cannot get access to things that they're not supposed to, to see or they're not supposed to know. So from that way, only have access to things that they're supposed to have access to, and it will be easy for them to remain secured. Uh, uh, the the other 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 department remain secured when anything happened to any of that particular uh, uh, depart sub department within your organization. And if someone become malicious insider, for example, within your organization, they may not cause harm to other because they don't have access to other uh, other files from other department. So this is very very important as well. So after saying so. Um, I think um, I spoke a lot, I, I couldn't even uh, observe my timing. I believe you might have questions or whatever. So allow me to open now the Q&A session, uh, if you don't mind, so that at least uh, I'll be able to hear from you, listen your views, uh, comments, ideas, and then we can debate from there. Thank you very much for the presentation, Yusuf. Um, and um, I would like to extend the invitation. Uh, we've not received any um, questions or comments through the chat. Uh, we do not have any hands that are raised yet, uh, but I do encourage all participants to make use of this opportunity to pose any question either through the chat um, facility in the Teams uh, application or by raising your hand and then we would gladly also allow you to post the question or your comment directly on the platform. Right, so far we've not had any questions coming through, so either the presentation was very good and all uh, topics covered uh, clear and concise, uh, but I also would want to mention that we've, we will uh, distribute a handout on the topics that Yusuf has covered uh, today uh, via email to all participants, uh, which uh, and also is direct um, contact details will be shared in case you would want to engage directly with users on any matters pertaining to cybersecurity uh, going forward.
So I believe there is no question, right? Yes, we'll give it one more minute for anybody who is still framing the, the question or comment, and then uh, we will wrap up on the questions in, in answer session. Uh, yeah, Cornelia, I see your hand is up, so you can speak. Um, thank you, Paulina. I'm not so sure whether it's just my interface, but are we able to type in any question? I'm, I, I'm failing to find the chat box within this uh, meeting. Or is it not only visible to me? I think it's possibly it's, not only you. I've just in case anyone wants to type their chat, to type their question, maybe in case they are not comfortable asking for commentary. Yeah, I put it just on. Yeah, I mean, I can see Jan has just responded. So you type it in. Um, yeah, and I can also type here. All right, colleagues, we also don't want to um, extend the question and answers sessions for too long. So if there are no um, comments and questions coming through, uh, Paulina, we will hand over to Paulina to um, take us through the uh, meeting uh, salutations and, and um, closure for, for today's session. Um, thank you everyone that has joined. Uh, I think it's just a note possibly to say for all our members, we'll issue out a, a CPE certificate. Uh, uh, I think it will be one hour uh, CPE certificate. And then what I'll do is since I've got everyone who's registered, I'll just uh, share the PDF document. And I'll actually put that on our website and then I'll just send out the link for everyone to access. So, and then, but if you've got any trouble accessing it, um, please don't hesitate to contact us or myself um, at the window chapter. But thank you so much, Yusuf, and everyone who has taken the time to attend this call today. Thank you very much. It was good oh. having you. All right, thank you. All right, bye bye. Cheers, bye. Thank you. All right.